Cruise News time. I asked you in the question of the day yesterday. Those are at the end of every video. So make sure you check those out. I asked you in the question of the day yesterday, uh, when should cruising resume in the U.S.? Or, or more specifically, when should have cruising resumed in the U.S. over the past year? Well, I, I got an answer pretty quickly and pretty loudly. Uh, somebody stepped up and said, how about now? That's right. When we were talking about one year of no cruising, a, a cruise line here in the U.S. done went and got started. And they're not the only ones playing the game in March. I gotta, I'm gotta. i excited to tell you about that. Plus, there was a fire on a cruise ship this week in Greece. Got to give you the deets on that. And then finally, there's a cruise company out there looking for workers. And, and, and the deadline is, is coming up. What's that all about? Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lita Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news. Well, let's talk about the fire first. I'm, I'm very excited about these other two stories. Uh, at this point, I don't really know which order to talk about them. I'm just kind of, it's Sunday. I'm just going by the seat of my pants. At this point, many of you have heard of the fire on the MSC Lyrica, uh, MSC cruise ship there in the waters of Corfu, Greece. It, it caught on fire. There was a lifeboat on deck six that caught on fire. The fire damaging primarily the exterior of the MSC Lyrica. MSC is reporting no interior damage. And the one thing that really kind of hit home with this story that all of us probably know intellectually, but I wasn't super connected to emotionally, is the uh, the Lyrica holds over 2,600 guests when you max that thing out. And it's got 700 crew member when it's operating during regular cruising time. There's 51 people on that cruise ship. Uh, 51 crew members, you know, keeping the thing going until it can return to its full cruising glory. And of course, that's just one of, of the hundreds of cruise ships that are around the world running a skeleton crew. But holy moly, could you imagine being 51 people on a cruise ship that, that houses uh, well over 3,000 guests and crew? That's got to be spooky. I tell you what, you probably hear every noise on that cruise ship at night. You're probably used to it. But, the, of course, the silver lining to all this is there were only 51 people on that cruise ship, uh, that there no one was injured, that the fire was contained, that the damage was primarily to the outside of the cruise ship. Uh, I would say another silver lining is that they were close to land, not in the middle of the ocean. Another silver lining, obviously, is that cruise ship was not loaded with passengers. Uh, why did the fire start? Who knows? They're investigating it. Uh, lifeboats, uh, they are filled with things that would catch on fire, electrical equipment, those kind of things. So, so uncertain at this point as to why the fire started, but uh, a fairly okay story that no one was injured and that the damage was contained to the outside of the vessel. But it was dramatic. If you saw any of the footage of this thing being on fire, uh, it was it, it was dramatic. Fire is one of those things you just don't want to hear associated with a cruise ship. Did I mention that there was a cruise line looking for unique cruise employees? I'm going to tell you about it, but first let me take a second to invite you to be a part of the La Lida Loca Cruising family, this virtual community. The way you do that is you subscribe to this YouTube channel with the notification bell on. It doesn't cost anything. It, it lets you be notified when there's new videos out. It basically keeps you in the know when it comes to the cruise life. And who wouldn't want that? Uh, so please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these updates. Well, Disney Cruise Line is looking for performers that look like Disney characters. I think I like that aspect of the story. They're looking for people that look like cartoon people. How about that? The other interesting nugget here is that you got to have your submission in by March the 22nd. Now, I'm going to read a little bit of the job description to see if maybe I could qualify. I don't know which Disney character I look like. Uh, seeking individuals with a slender to athletic build. Uh, performers should be able to demonstrate high energy character animation levels. Full range of body movement. And imaginative improv improvisation. If you can't say improvisational skills, are you disqualified? Improvis 
You got to be able to do improv. You need some techniques. This is who they're looking for. Do you look like any of these characters? Mulan, five foot two to five foot six. Jasmine, five foot three to five foot seven. Or Moana, five three two five five. I guess they're not looking for any dudes. I take back all of my movements. How about that? But yeah, so Disney Cruise Line looking for character performers by the 22nd of March. Uh, what does that mean? Like, if, if, the, if you're going to audition, or are they going to offer you a job in March? When would you go to work? The mystery continues. We covered the story earlier in the week where the CEO of Disney said, with a little luck, they will be sailing in the fall. But some people said Disney likes to under-promise and over-deliver. Maybe they're going to sneak it in before then? Is that something we can hope for? I don't know. So, yeah, if you look like Mulan, Jasmine, or Moana, uh... Get your application in now. All right, and the big story, the exciting story, is there There are cruise lines out there that, that can look at the CDC and, and, and say, well, you're not the boss of me, and, and, and we're going to cruise. And that's exactly what's happened. The CDC has restrictions for cruise ships that carry 250 individuals or more. That's crew and passengers. And there's some smaller cruise lines out there that have some smaller cruise ships, one of them being American Cruise Lines. They they went cruising yesterday. Uh, they hold about 100 passengers on their cruise ship, and, and they're cruising from Florida up to South Carolina this week all along the coast of the United States. Well, Tony, that sure sounds like a domestic cruise. How can they be doing that? What about the Passenger Vessel Services Act? What about the Jones Act? Are they the are they not the boss of American Cruise Lines? Well, they are the boss of American Cruise Lines, but American Cruise Lines, they got the credentials uh, baked right in their name. American-built cruise ship, American-flagged cruise ship, American-staffed cruise ship. So they're good. So yeah, they're beginning their cruise season. They tried all in 2020. They couldn't get it done, but they will be doing sailings up and down the coast of the United States with their cruise ships. We're coming out on this first trip. They, they took on about 75 passengers down in Amelia Island in Florida. All the passengers were required to provide a COVID test uh, four days before the boarding. All the crew members tested. Also, there's no vaccine requirement. Uh, masks are required in public. And let me let me just mention this real quickly. Yesterday, we looked at the data and we see that the data still probably supports cruising being shut down in the United States. So it's interesting that this small company, the American Cruise Line, is able to make a go at it. And uh, maybe this is a good test. It's not the same as full-on ocean cruising, but at least on America Cruise Line, with the cruises up and down the coast, we will get a good sense pretty quickly whether or not you can handle 75 passengers on a cruise ship without incident, uh, because you know if anything happens, we'll hear about it. So, uh, yeah, I, it's a baby step. I think it's a good baby step, but uh, they're not a alone. They're not alone. Uh, the, something else is happening tomorrow. Tomorrow, the American Steamboat Company will begin its season sailing its paddle wheel cruise ship, the American Duchess, from New Orleans to Memphis with a private charter. Now, American Queen Steamboat Company, they do have a vaccine requirement. It does not kick in until July the 1st. Crew will have to be vaccinated. Passengers will have to be vaccinated. And even people that provide their excursions, excursion drivers, will have to be vaccinated. There will also be a testing policy uh, these are PCR tests, both for American Cruise Line and American Queen Steamboat Company. American Queen Steamboat Company requiring a PCR test the night before the cruise for both crew and passenger. They're also going to be doing other health protocols. Capacity is reduced. Mask will be required in public and social distancing will be adhered to. I did cover the story possibly late last year where American Queen Steamboat Company purchased an old casino paddle wheel boat and renovated it. It will be making its debut as the American Countess uh, coming up on March the 28th. And so uh, cruising, cruising is happening in the United States. Boom, that's your cruise news. The question for the day is this, and, and while you're down in the comments, please hit the like button. Would you do one of these cruises? W which would you pick? Would you pick the Paddle Wheel River Cruise, or would you pick the small cruise ship Coastal Cruise? What sounds more appealing to you? And of course, there's a lot of protocols on this cruise, and there are people that said, I just ain't gonna cruise with the protocols. I quit. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check that out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tony with La Lida Loca, and until the next time, We'll see you on the Lido.
拜。